Hey, what's up? It's now welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, it is seriously like six fucking degrees outside. I just tried to ride my bike outdoors. It's fucking impossible. So, I decided to come home and uh, I was thinking about it and I was like, back in the day, like when I used to get fucking wasted all day, and it was cold like this. I would listen to certain albums, like Dissections of Sombra Lane, or like some early Immortal, and you know, kind of embrace the cold and you know, just be a nerd about it and squeeze invisible fruit all day and drink 40s and smoke blunts. But uh, times have progressively changed and you know, now there's a kind of new realm of bands that I listen to when it's fucking freezing out minus the alcohol but every now and again I smoked a blunt last night to be honest but I was watching some sports and it looks like the Eagles won I really don't know too much about football but uh yeah it looked like they got really lucky and that seems like Philly's thing but Sadly, we are choke artists, so I'm sorry, but my bets are against the Eagles. That's just the way Philadelphia rolls as a sporting city. But I don't put my faith in the faith of others when it comes to my hobbies. So here are five albums that I enjoy listening to when it's fucking sub-zero outside and I need something that sounds as cold as I fucking feel. And I'm gonna start things off with Grok. A Spineless Descent, or Grok. I'm not sure how to actually pronounce this project. But this is some amazing, amazing, atmospheric, synthy, icy black metal. And this is two separate versions, but same track listing and everything. I love the track Lunar Riders, Universals, this is great, great stuff, US black metal. And uh, this one right here is limited to 100 copies, I'm sure the other is as well. This is on Underground Soundscapes, the other is Closter Recordings, who has like fucking Jim Jones sermons for sale, which is pretty gnarly. But uh... Grok exists as a pillar of war on all media, outlets, scenes, trends, label low lives, popularity contest posers, and phony flavor of the week supporters. You are and will forever be less than nothing. I fucking love it. I love this record. It sounds fucking gorgeous, cold, and pretty much hits every single fucking little heart string of mine when it comes to black metal get into this shit and uh this copy's pretty much the same but comes on this fucking awesome looking blue pro tape great stuff and again you have the same little nice threat on the inside i dig it so check it out and next up oh sorry about that this is something I actually have more than one copy of, but uh, that's just on the Emperor side of things, and yeah, that is a Horde Ainsland split with Enslaved. I fucking love this. From the Emperor self-titled EP to the Enslaved side of things, this is cold as fuck. This is some of Emperor's best material, and this is some of Enslaved's best material. So you have two of the best from the second wave Scandinavian black metal movement. Century Black Records. Promotional use only. But, yeah, the Horde Ainsland split is something fucking awesome when it, com when it comes to Scandinavian black metal. And both sides of this are great. Well... You know, the Emperor side of things and the Enslaved side of things. I'm not sure why it only says Emperor on here. It's not like somebody scratched out the uh, Enslaved logo or anything. Like, 
it's kind of strange, but yeah, you have tracks 1 to 4 by Emperor and tracks 5 to 11 by Enslaved. Great, great shit. Get into it. Also, just the Enslaved self-titled alone. Another amazing piece of music along with Enslaved Frost. Fuck yeah. Uh, next up, fucking Demon Sea. Within the Sylvan Realms of Frost. Just look at that cover. That sums up how I felt outside a couple minutes ago. Jesus Christ. So fucking cold. And the way this sounds is seriously like... Hands of ice. Gathering around your throat and squeezing the fucking breath out of you. And imagine being able to see your breath slowly stop coming as these hands of ice strangle you sonically. Because that's what Demon Sea does here with Within the Sylvan Realms of Frost. This is one of the coldest sounding US black metal releases, I think, ever. Every single thing about this is just very, very frostbitten sounding and just... Look at that cover photo. It kind of sums up the overall sound, the production, the riffing. Very, very rooted in early Dark Throne. The first three black metal Dark Throne records especially. This is fucking great. Knighthood of the Moonlit Realm starts things off and it just gets better and better. In Winter's Ancient Slumber. Great stuff from the U.S. Demon Sea within the Sylvan Realms of Frost. Hell yeah, on Nuclear War Now Records, I highly, highly recommend this. If you live in the East Coast and feel like you've been kind of stuck inside and are going a little, you know, Jack Torrance stir crazy, this is a great way to, you know, kind of get around that. It's one of those albums that has that kind of an impact when you listen to it. Oh, I'm going to save that for last. Next up, this is New Jersey's Death Fortress. I worship this band. I think they're fucking great. I mention them all the time. and Every single time I make a black metal video, I feel like I mention how good Death Fortress is. But when you have a band that kind of sounds like Archgoat fucking Immortal... You need to talk about it. And up here, oh my god, Storming Wrath, The Warrior's Mantle, Battlefield Zenith. Fuck yeah, Wisdom of the Unspoken, Triumph of the Undying. Every track on here with Sean Eldridge's drumming to Tom Warrior's vocal. This is so fucking good. Just look at that artwork on a... Uh, Fallen Empire Records, seriously, just check this out. I've talking about this in so many different videos. If you've yet to listen to this yet and are new to this channel, Death Fortress is from New Jersey and seriously, I feel are one of the more underrated acts in black metal. This band should be opening up fucking tours with one of the, with some of the finest right now. But I understand, you know, Siege Column just got picked up by Nuclear War now, so congratulations. That exists members of the whole evil metal movement in New Jersey, which is awesome. Uh, next up is a pretty obvious uh, staple of the second wave Scandinavian black metal movement, and that is Dark Thrones Transylvanian Hunger. I mean, it's so fucking cold sounding and... Something that I feel actually makes the temperature outside drop when you listen to it. And this is a massive vinyl. Like, it sounds great. It's fucking heavy as hell. The production is so on point. Like, um, oh, I love this album. And I understand that back in the day, it had a lot of controversy around it and rightfully so i mean just read up on it i'm not going to go into it but transylvanian hunger was recorded in november and december 1993 but when you have certain tracks that are you know were written by count grishoff uh you know varg from burzum 
you kind of get some controversy, and also when you call yourselves true Aryan black metal, and then switch it to true Norwegian black metal and make a massive press statement, which you can read in uh, Lords of Chaos. It's pretty crazy, but, you know, that's all history, but... Next up is something new that I picked up, but something that I haven't, you know, not been listening to over the winter since I first heard this masterpiece, and that is Panopticon's Roads to the North. I remember when I first read about this coming out, and about Austin moving from Kentucky to Minnesota, and being inspired to make this record. And then I, I didn't hear anything for a while, and then out of nowhere... I saw this on, like, uh, Decibel's year-end list, and I went on media fire at the time, and I'm sorry, Austin, Marty, everybody, I stole this, you know, online stealing, and I instantly fell in love with this frost-bitten fucking love letter to so many different things, but most of all, to Minnesota, and... It's just gorgeous, and it goes to match with just this frozen landscape. And I know the suburbs of Philadelphia are not some frozen fucking gorgeous forest, but about a mile up the road, not right now, the snow all melted because it was 65 degrees on Friday, and now it's 6 degrees, but I could have taken this photo similar, like kind of like this. A couple days ago but this is some gorgeous gorgeous US black metal but at the same time totally in its own realm of awesomeness I mean not many bands in black metal as someone said a couple videos again dedicate tracks to their wives and like their children to me that's fucking great like the echoes of dissonant even song, a lament to distance, where mountains pierce the sky for my dear wife Becca. To me, that's fucking amazing. One Last Fire, such a great fucking song, and uh, an ode to a night of music, fire, and madness. So many great tracks on here. I love the sigh of summer. Uh, the sigh of summer. Never too old to learn to trust a friend. Just great, great stuff. And kind of outside of your normal realms of black metal. There's banjos on here. There's all sorts of fucking awesomeness. And I, I love it. You have a fucking Native American flute even. A mandolin. Oh, so good. Everything about this is amazing. Austin Lunn, you are a fucking genius. Panopticon's Road to the North. Seriously. A love letter to winter, pretty much. And, uh, yeah, th th that's it. Uh, we have been blasting... Where the fuck did I put that? Uh, sorry? We've been blasting Kurafragrium's Beast of the Temple of Satan. So fucking good, I forgot to mention. We were listening to this. I love this album. It's seriously so fucking vicious. Get into some Kurafragrium... Beasts of the Temple of Satan. Probably some of the best war metal to come out last year. And, uh, yeah. Stay warm out there if you live on the East Coast. If you live somewhere warm, get fucked. It's freezing here. Send your warmness this way. I fucking need it. Thanks for watching. Hails. <laughs>